Hello, guys. I'm so glad we've met here once again. And we are going to do a React tutorial today. And I think you remember that we did the API part of the application. And this is it. Before we keep going, I'd like to tell everybody who is going to be new here what we are going to build. And what we are building is um, an e-commerce similar website. So it's a website for a friend who is a broker. Now, what he told me is that he takes different um, products from companies and then he go advertise them and then people can see the product if they are interested. Now they come and then they order those items. They talk about it. And then when they are interested, they pay, right? And then we build the API part of this whole application. So there's going to be a company who is having items and then people, like individuals can come in, order those items and then have the items for them, right? So you are going to have um, a list of products. And then if you look at this, we are having, we build the API, it is working. If you look at this, we've been, we are able to log in, see the response. And then we have the bearer token, which we are going to connect to our React front end. And then once we log in, we can see all the product, like if we hit product, let me go get product. If we hit product, we see, I think, um, yeah, right? We are able to see all the product here. And then um, the, if you are the admin tool, you you can see all the um, orders which are here. Now I'm, I'm, I'm hitting a get request. Oh, unauthorized means I'm not signing as an admin. All right, maybe the auth token, let me copy the auth token from the login and then um, header. I'm going to copy the auth token because that auth token I was using is uh, sorry, all the orders. Cool. And then let's hit dependency. Great. So once we log in, we're able to see the order, right? All the orders in the application. And only the admin is able to see all the orders. So we are going to build an app, right? We build the API. We are going to add a front end. And that front end is going to have um, uh, authentication. We're doing that with device gem from um, Ruby on Rails. Then authorization, we are doing that with scan content. And then at the end of the day, this is what we are going to build. This is the UI part of this whole thing. Um, we are going to build this. Um, there's going to be a list of all the products, right? This is going to be a list of all the products. And then the beautiful thing about this whole thing that when I was building it, I was so lovely. I was so glad with it is we are going to build everything as a reusable component. And we are not going to repeat anything. For example, when building this nav bar, you're going to see that we could go with the old traditional way of repeating ourselves over and over again. But we're going to learn how to do this without repeating any single thing. And then we are going to have a container thing which surrounds all the pages. And then each page, for example, this is the home page, it's going to be like this. You see there's the nav bar here, the footer here, and then the details page is going to be the same thing. The nav bar here, the footer there. And then we are going to have the container surrounding everything so that we don't keep repeating ourselves, importing header, foot, um, nav bar, footer, nav bar, footer on all pages. We're going to put everything in the container co component, and then every page is going to be a child of that container component. We are going to build several um, pages, right? But for now, um, let's start from the top, right? Let's start from the top. And to build this application, um, the question is, where do we start from? Um, we need to bootstrap the application. And if you've heard of um, um, VIT, VIT is a new way to start React application. VIT is a new way. Instead of using create React app, we could go with VIT. And then I was even reading the React router documentation and they recommend using this. So let's go to the React Router DOM. Here I am. And there's the tutorial portion here, which set up, tells us how to get up and running. Now, this is React Router 6, which is very, very um, advanced and improved version over the React Router 5. So watch out for some changes here. So that's why I would like to follow these documentations. So, 
first of all, the first few minutes is going to follow all just this documentation without anything. So I'm opening my terminal here and let me just copy and paste this link here. And then let me change the app name to, let's see. Um, first of all, we build the, let's see, shop um, UI, right? That's going to be the app name. And then once we start the application, Vet is saying that we should follow the prompt. We should go into the app directory. And then from there, we are going to install the React router, everything that has to do with React router. And then from there, we can, um, yeah. So we should follow the prompt. So CD shop UI. And then the next one is npm install. And then from there, we we'll, we we'll do the React router installation. Now, whilst it's setting up, we like to know um, how different um, we are going to do a thing. Mm -hmm. Now, the new way of um, defining route to React is that we're going to use the um, create browser router. And that create browser router and then the route provider are going to help us so that we just, um, now I'm going to put the, um, I'm going to install this um, setup, right? This is where I copied it from. The React router setup, right? And then once it's get done, we are going to set up our router, right? We are going to set up our router. Now, if you are familiar with route application, we know that the index page is the index.js file. But when you bootstrap the app with um, this, the index page is going to be main.js. So they are saying that we should go to the main.js, then make some small changes over there. All right, this is done. So let me open the code in here. So open. Let's open this thing here. I could go with using code dot, but um, I like to use the same term now. So then code. Um, all right, then let me open this thing here. Then once we are done, I think the next command is that they are saying we should go to the main.js file and then paste this here. But before we go, I would like to let's run the app and see what we got from bits and then the React um, installation that we did. So at least we can know what is happening with that. So uh, npm, right. Uh, Okay. Now, this is not going to be started with npm run start. The documentation is saying that we should start with npm run dev, not npm run dev. We just follow the documentation. Nothing strange here. And then we are going to this link. Let me copy that, go to my browser, and then hit it. And boom, this is what we got. So beautiful, so nice. And then bit is so lovely. It, you don't have to wait for anything. Just keep going. Cool. So once we got this done, um, the next portion is that um, let's go to the tutorial. And the next portion is that we should go to the main.js farm, then paste this here. All right. So I'm copying SRC main.js. This is where they are saying we should paste. It. All right. And then I'm going to just take away the app. I'm going to just, just pick away the app. Yeah. And then paste the browser router over there. And then from there, the next part is that we should define our router. Now, our router is going to be the path and the element we are going to render when we go to that path. So after this, we should define uh router. Now, whilst you are going, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and ask. So all the router is saying is that if we go to the slash or the root route, we should render the hello world component. And then from there, we should call the router provider and then give it the router as a parameter. So instead of the app, we are going to show this one. Now, this is how we are setting up our route. 
And all we're doing is that we are seeing that, hey, if we should go to the root part, render this element. Now we could render a React component or a page here. We are going to do that soon, but for now, let's look at what we got from here. Hey, this is it, great. So we've defined our first route. So like this soon, right? Okay, let's see if we can define another route. Like we use a real component. Let's go, still following the documentation. And then what they are saying is that we should add a global layout for this option. We should make a directory called um, root and route here yeah, inside the FLC folder and create a root. Um, uh, so a new file, and then this is what I'm doing. So there's a root file created inside the SRC folder. And let's add something. Let's see. Let's see. Now I'm having, I'm having this extension which helps me to generate um, um, arrow functions in React. And then it's called React Snippet. So you can go ahead and check it out. So just the root here, right? So this is just to render the root page. I'm going to see if we can render that. So we we'll go to the main, and instead of the hello world, we can render the root page. It's auto imported here, and then let's see and see what we got. Yay! Can you see this root page here? So this is how simple it is to set up a route. Now let's try to add another route here with this. Let's go to the root again and let's try adding about the PS6. Like this is going to be the about piece, so RAFCE. And then let's call it about, okay. So let's say about two, two, okay. All right. And then we go to the main, and just like we did for this one, all we do is that we copy, we paste, and what's the route, like the path is going to be about, and then the component we are going to render is about, so cool, and then boom. Let's see if we go to the about, um, it's going to work great. Can you see this? The about thing is working, and all this comes with um, the browser router without any errors. There's one more thing we like to pick from here before we go to our app and continue working. And that's how do we handle errors, right? Let's assume we are, um, we want to render a page and there are some errors. How do we handle that? And the, there's a helper method called, um, we can create an error page, right? And then we can have this thing called error element. That error element is what we are going to show when there's an error rendering a page. And how is um how are they saying we should handle that? They're saying that we should create an error page component, right? So we should go to SRC and then create an error page component. So I'm going to create a new file, just paste what we did here, and then let's just copy this. This just come from um React Rock done. They are saying that just do this, and then boom. All we're doing is that we are taking the error that comes. So the use router error, we just take the error. So if the page is not found, we're going to see that, hey, the error is page is not found. And then they are controlling the logic, we don't care. And then we are logging that error, error of message. So let's just see. And then go back to the point, point um, like here. And they are saying that this is how we render it. You see, error element, error element. And then um, we can go to the route. Let's assume this one to error element and it's going to be error uh, piece. Uh, it means that when we are rendering this component and there's any error, right? We would like to just render what is there inside the error element. And we can use different error elements for different pieces. But I like to use the same thing. You can go ahead and customize what you like to do. And let's go to the page and test this to say. Right, this page is working, but let's assume that we add something which does not exist, right? And what do we see? Oops, right? Sorry, it is not found, right? And then it happens for the home page too. 
we have the same error because we are using this error element and all this can come by default for React router. Uh, done. Okay. So we're good up and running with our React router. It means that for now we can go ahead and from our design, um, set up um, uh, navbar because we now have the route and then we can get some page where the user can route. Mm -hmm. but before we go, let me add some, um, let me add some comment message to this. So we need your commit here and perfect. So we got mm -hmm. this one. Cool. So the next portion is to add um, um, the navigation here. And the question is, where do we start from? There's a lot of things like we could do. We could start by creating the whole big component and the react the old, the good old way. Let me show you. I'm going to create something called components, right? Every uh, all these things by default should be the components folders. Components. And then we can have this now, now, right? And then um, let's do now item. All right, now by the text, all right. All right, so the old way that we were using is to, let's say we could create um, a whole big component, let's say, in, um, the logo is going to be there, right? And then from there, we are going to have li, um, let's say, times four, and then we add about um, contact, then um, um, we could add this link, right? And then we could have um, uh, whatever the links are going to be there. Right? And then sometimes we wanted to add logo. So the logo two is going to be there. And then we keep repeating this over and over again. Now, one thing we're going to see that now I'm just using an ally. So you can see the difference, but you're going to see that sometimes we have a logo here. Sorry, an icon here icon here and the icon is surrounded by some data and then the icon is going to go inside and then we are going to have um, um, a link right and then the link is going to have our text and then we're going to repeat this over and over and over again and if you look at this it's just repeating the whole thing we are going to repeat all the styles for this now we're going to repeat um, the icons how we are styling them. And even comparing uh, it to something like what we are going to build. Look, some of the links that we are going to add is going to be rendered conditionally. So um, we like to render some of them when a user is an admin. If the, the user is an admin, we like to be able to allow the user to prefer more things, like see more things than someone who is not an admin. And then if the person is logged in, we may want to see the person to see more. For example, the person, we can check if the person has made some sales on the website. So some of these things are going to be rendered dynamically. And we, if we are going to use something like the Kudo way, the old way we're doing that, then we have to surround this, uh, this thing around some if conditioning, say if um, user, um, sorry, if user is logged in, then what do we do? We would want to um, render maybe these things, right? Right. Then we go to else, then render some of these things, right? Then like else, if, then else, right? We keep doing this and the whole code become like, we keep repeating the whole code become something. That's a good way of doing things, but we actually saying that no, this is, this is not too good, right? There's a better way of doing that. And I'm going to show you how they say everything. So the first thing is that all the links here, all these links, link, 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 we can render them using a link item, like nav item. They are going to be items. So we create a component to render each single link. And that 
um, lane would be given to the nav bar and the nav bar will render the links. Let's see how we do that. So let me clean this up. Uh, I'll come back to you, nav bar. All right, but before we come back to nav bar, let's go ahead and create the nav um, item, the VS6, right? And this nav item, right, yeah, this nav item is going to have the specific item we'd like to render, right? That single item. Now, for the purposes of time, I don't like to use too much of your time. I was preparing this whole thing. So let me just show you what I, um, I did for you whilst I was preparing this code because the last time we said that uh, we just want the understanding, not me sitting down typing. Mm -hmm. So um, we are using prop types. Don't worry about prop types. Prop types is how we verify that the property, the prop we are, the component is receiving is um, what we expect it to receive. Yeah. You can read a lot, a, um, a lot about prop types in the React documentation. So type checking, and then why type checking? Why do we use prop types? And then uh, the, the types that we could check, we could check for array, boolean, function number, object string, right? These are the things that we could check. So for the item that we are going to receive, it's just going to be an object because it's going to be something like this. So, it's going to be something like this. So we are going to have the main uh, sorry, URL. Uh, and it's going to be made, let's see, slash. And then we're going to have time. So let's see. Um, and then from there, we're going to have um icon. And then that may be an icon, right? And then. Um, yeah, this is how, what uh, we are going to receive. And then we are going to receive so many of that. We're going to see another one, right? And this is going to be about, so the user will route to about, and then about, and then about type. Right, so this is an example of what we are going to receive. It passed to the number, right? And that's why we are seeing that the prop type is going to be an object. Right? If you like more information, you can read about it from the prop types documentation on React side. So we actually seen that we've updated the documentation. So we go to the React or there. Yeah, check it out. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing about prop types. And then we uh, yeah. And then from there, uh, you see whenever we click on any of the links. Whenever we click on any of the links, yeah, any of the links, it takes up to some place. Right? Anytime you click on the nav link, it takes up to some place. And um, instead of using an A anchor tag to take us to some place, you know that React, React, we like, uh, we don't want the page to refresh. React just allow us to create single page that we can use so that we don't refresh the page. So when we are moving from page to page, we don't reload it. We don't really know. We only change the, the, the content that the user is seeing. So we are going to use the link um link tag provided by React. We added some stuff, right? Don't worry about these stuff. And then from there, I'm checking that um if the item, like if the object we receive from the um the object we receive, right? This is going to be just one item. So it's going to be something like this. So if the object we receive is having an icon, render it. If not, nothing. Then we are rendering the title. It may sound a bit confusing, but do you remember what I showed you over here? Let me go back and then let me undo this, right? So this is going to be something like this. If you've worked with it before, creating an, an, a nav item before, it's going to be something like this. So we are going to have a list of those items. So, so it's going to be, let's see, header, I don't know. And then the header is going to sound everything. And then this is how we have, and then the logo is going to be here. And then I think if you look at what we were doing, the logo is on the right, and then the links are on the right. So the links are like this, one, right? And then each link may come with an icon. So normally we have an icon here, and those icons, we render it so we can use a thing and then 
let's see, span to render the icon, right? We have the icon there. And apart from that, we go and render the, um, let's see, we have another div or something. And then we have an e, um, uh, span, another span to render the, con uh, like this is going to be the icon, icon, and then the, um, let's see, contact for the length, green. And this is just going to be one line, right? And we keep rendering it over and over again. And we are going to do that, the same thing for profile. We render the icon, the link. We're going to do the next thing for, let's say contact that, render the link, all the links. So you see, for just one thing that we are going to render, look at the code that we have to repeat over and over again. And this is what we are simplifying over here. We are seeing that, oh no, just provide me with this. So if you are going to go, instead of doing all these, over and over again for all the links. No, don't do this. Just provide me with the URL, the title, which is going to be, let's say, the home or the, whatever the link is, and then the icon. Just provide those things. And then I'll reuse this complaint over and over again. So just show that on the code. I don't know if you get any questions. If there are any questions, you can drop in the chat. So we are good to go from here and then um let's keep this guy out. Great. Cool. So we now have um our nav item, like it's going to be used to render a single item then, right? Very and then once we have the item. We have to, it's just going to be for all the items. Now we have to build the whole of this com component, right? The whole of this component. And then that's going to be called the nav bar. The items are going to live inside the nav bar. And how do we do that? So we have the nav. We should go into the nav bar. And pull. And then once we go into the nav bar, um, but there's some trick here, like we're going one by one and then we are going to just run that in frame. Um, mm -hmm. So here's the nav bar. The nav bar too, remember that we said that the nav item is going to receive item and then we give the example. The nav bar too, that is not where we would like to put all the those items. We would like to put the items in a container, right? And then before we even go ahead, let me create this um, container here so that I don't confuse you. Container. And this container is going to, let's see, uh, sorry, index, this, this, and then this container is hard, absolutely great. So it's going to be container. <laughs> Sorry. All right. This container is going to house, like it's going to have children as a prop. Children is a key word in React. That says that anything, like the container is going to have, I mean, how do we call it? Um, nav bar here, right? And then it's going to have over here. Then we are going to render the um, children, great. We are going to render the children here like this. Children is not coming for very I'm sorry. Cool. Children is going to, it means that wherever we, um, wherever we call this container, wherever we call it, the container is automatically like that component. If we call the, we are going to call this container around the, the these links, right? So we are going to call the container here. I'm going to build another, but before we go, let me show you what we are going to do. So we are going to build container, right? And then container. And then we are going to pass them like um, each one. And this is going to be the about each, right? And then we may have some content here. So let's see, we have a P, and let's see, a line. Uh, oh, okay. 
we have a long set. Okay? So it means that automatically when rendering this, let me show you even the four window. Where is the container? We have this, then you go to the about. We have this. And then we can do the same thing for the root path. We are going to put everything inside the container. If you've never done this before. So. Then let's add some paragraph here. So let me learn. Um, um, let's see all paragraphs. Oops. Learn, oh, learn. Um, yeah. Great, we have three sentences here. And then once we do this, I'm just adding some content here. Okay? And let's do it to our page. You see that the nav bar and then the footer are here. The same way when we go to the um the about, we're going to see that the nav bar and the footer are there. Right. Mm -hmm. And this means that we are going to use this component. The moment we put a container around the page, then automatically that page is going to have the now and the footer or any other things like we would like to share across the pages, Chrome. That's why we are creating the container. So for now, let's go ahead and finish this container, the work around the container. So, sorry, the nav bar, then we import the nav bar here instead of just using the nav bar, then we finish the work around the footer, we import the footer here and then we use it. So this is going to be the nav bar. And there's some trick but I'd like to show you now. All right, so the next question is, how do we um, handle this nav bar? Right, how do we handle this nav bar and give it all the items it's expecting and then the conditions it is going to use to render the items and then um, the beautiful thing about this is that we've seen that this container is going to have the nav bar and then the footer. And some of these things are going to be shared between the nav bar and the footer. For example, the app logo. We could put the logo inside the nav bar here, just put the logo here, just see logo, add the URL, boom, and we are good to go. And then go into the footer and put it there. But what if we want to change the logo in the near future? You have to go to all the places we put the logo there and then keep changing that. And React is seeing that that is wrong. You define the thing once and reuse it in multiple places. So instead of putting the logo in the nav bar and then in the footer, you are going to put it at one place. So you are going to call it inside the container and use it. And React has a convention that I like to do. We can create a folder here called utils, right? And then let's create a um, file called constants, right? the years and then we're going to put all the things like so the things that we like to share across um the file here okay and these are just the constants that we are going to use across our application and it's nothing more just a logo which is going to be a link to an image i like to use like a logo company name just a um a company name i'm defining i'll be using it later and then the api url now, the benefit of doing this, um, I don't know, is that, um, you see, now we are taking our API from localhost, but very soon we may take it from the internet online. And it will be very a very big way if all the places that we are using this API URL, we have to go there and change the base URL, right? But you know that the base URL is never going to change in the app. If we are calling API from, um github.com slash whatever whatever it's not going to change the only ones that are going to change is the various um links the urls like the slash product slash about slash sign up those ones are going to change so we just have to we we'll just need to keep the base url over here and then wherever we need this 
just go over there and import the base URL. And later, when we want to change the base URL from localhost to different site, we just come and change it here. And automatically, everybody has it, right? This is the benefit of using reusable components. Right? So let's go over to the, um, we've put the nav in there. So let's go over to the nav bar, like the container. Let's import the nav bar. Right, and let's start passing the the things that I would like to pass in. So the first thing is the logo, and I think you remember that we defined the logo. Yay! Thank you. The logo has been imported, and then uh, if you look at this number, uh, think let's define the things that we like to put on the number. So it's going to be the logo, then the items, then is log is um. The log in status, right? Going to be the log in. Then the last one is going to be this. Cool. So these are the things that we are going to pass. The reason why we are passing is logged in and it's admin is that we like to check, hey, are you the admin? Then let's show you this link. Are you a login user? Let's show you the links that you are going to have access to, for example, you can now place orders and see your orders, right? If you are an admin user, then you can see all the users. You can see all the orders. Then you can create a new product, right? Those links, we don't want to allow everybody. So we are just going to import it in this place. And then we are going to be based on that. And then um, we are going to base on that to render what we want to render on the screen. So we have the logo, then for now, we don't have the authentication working in our application. So for the is logged in, let's set it to, let's see, because it's logged in, let's say it's equal to true, right? And then the same thing for the is admin. We don't care so much about it. Let's say it's that one is equal to true, right? It means that it's logged in, it's admin is equal to true. And then all we do is that we see uh, logged in, yeah. And it's equal to this login that we define here. Later, we will use the user's um, login status to just see that um, if the user is logged in or not. Great. And then the last one is the items. And then um, let me see. The last one is the items. And this items is what we would like to render to the user. Now, let me copy and paste from here. I think that's what we discussed the last time that because of time, it's very important to be you watching me type everything right here. So these are the items. Now, don't get blew up. It's just what we want to render. So the title just going to be this one, the link name, let's say it's home, about, contact, whatever is going to be. The the title that we like to use. Then the URL is where we route the user to. When we click on this link, the icon, you know it. The only difference is the access. The access is just defining who can see this link. We are going to create a function to check the access level and render the data dynamic so that who can see this. That's what we are doing here. We are going to see this version and you see, um, Items here. So this is the items in the different right? And then let's close this. Okay. Close this. I don't know if there are any questions for this. You can ask. I would like to answer those questions. All right. If there are no questions, let's keep going. So now that we have this. Um, I think we can go inside the nav bar and then we have this thing. So what do we do with it, right? What do we do with these links? Right? I think the next thing that we do is that we should create a function and that function should be able to uh, filter the items, right? And then show the user what the user deserves to see. And then there's the function I created um, the function is called filtered items. So it will take the items.
Great. So it will go through the item. These are the items, right? It will go through the items. It will take each single item. So when it take this one, what it will do is that if the item, this item, the access, this access is equal to all, then it will return true. Return true in this in that return everything, right? Return the item. Just return it to the user. Just return this item to the user. Great. But if the item, the access is equal to logged in, let's assume that this one is, uh, let me create another item here. For the logged in access, let's see. Uh, my profile, right? And then the whole thing is profile. And then the item, the link, don't worry, then the access is logged in, right? Great. The next thing is, if the access is logged in, right? And logged in, like the logged in pass to the, um, the like the nav, like your login status, the user's login status is equal to true. This is a short form. Just saying that if login is set to true, then we render the item. I don't know if you get a point, right? Just a point, right? If the item the access is equal to login and you are login, remember we define the login status here. We are going to use the authentication to do that like later, but then for now we are just using the um, um, a function, uh, I'm sorry, just a variable to store the login system. So if the access is logged in, if this one is logged in, the access is logged in, and your status, you, the person who is coming in, who are accessing the website, you are logged in, then return that item to you. But if you are not logged in, then we don't return that item to you, right? Then the last one, if the item, the access is admin, for example, the slash admin, go to admin slash admin. And then if you are an admin, if you are an admin, they return that specific item to you. If not, they return for, we don't show you the item. This is a simple function to filter through the items. It may sound, seems confusing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, and we keep learning, so all right. that's the best thing to do. Right. And then from here, what do we do? We would like to render everything. We like to render everything. We are just going to render the logo with an image. Then the filtered items, right? Those filtered items are going to be rendered. Uh, no. No. Sorry, so we need to import now. I don't know if I exported the nav item. We can in... oh, this is not nav item here, it should be nav by. This is the nav bar, right? So we need the nav item. Let's see. Do we really call it nav item? Great. So it's called nav item. Import nav. Great. Cool. So we have the nav item, and that's what we like to see. Perfect. So all we're seeing is that um, we will just filter through the items, and this item will just give us the links the user has the right to see. And from there, we just map the filtered items. And for each of them, we render it using the nav item. And that nav item is accepting the keys, title, and the item. If you remember, the type item is going to be an object. Remember, it's going to be one of them. Each one of them is going to be the item. And then we render the item using the nav. It's a bit confusing. I'm sorry. Yeah. But you just keep playing it. So I don't think uh, there could be better ways you could read around it and see if there are um, better options to do that. But for now, yeah, that's what we have. Right. So I don't know if there any questions, but let me add the CSS styles to this guy so that I uh, then um, 
now the CSS and then we can um, just pop in this to my stars here. This is just style and not some screen. So um, you can add your own style that you want. So now we've got CSS and then let me paste this guy here. Get the now, how it displays flex, the nav item, all the items. And then let me put this guy also in the nav, all right, now back to this other. And then who is not see the container if you see uh, We are definitely going to encounter an error, don't worry about that. And then let's see. Yeah, we need to stop crop types. I'm sorry. Um, so NPM stop crop types, right? I think we stop crop types. And then whilst it's installing crop types, I think we forgot to add the crop types to this. So um let me add um, import um crop types. So we import um this is for both types from um both types uh, not real types and then from there all we do is that we add the top types that we are supposed to add to the nav bar and then we can go. let me not waste your time. We get the prop types that we are interested in. Good. Right. We need to start up here once again. Because... Great. So our app is running. Let's go back and see what we got. Yeah, it's not showing up because it's an error. Let's check this out. There's always going to be an error. That's coding for you. Not why it's not defined. You know what? Where did you put the number? It's inside the container. So, all right. So, this guy. Do we really have it? Great. No, but maybe I'm just coming with a different name. Yeah, so. Um, this is not by right. Perfect. I'm sorry. Um, now once. When you are working with bits, um, and then the whole thing is just uh, sometimes you need to refresh the feeling. We use the R, R means restart the server, right? And then boom, we got this guy here. Can you see this? We have another bar rendered nicely, and then it just go to the right place if you click on it. But you see, these links are there my profile, the admin. Let me show you. Um, if we change this, the is login status. Let's go to this is first time. All right, let's go to the container, and then let's change the is login status. Let's see if it is. Do you remember that some of these things my profile before the person sees the access is logging right? Let's change this to false, and you're gonna see what will happen if we are going to see my profile. Boom, it's gone. The profile cannot be seen again. Can you see that now the admin is there? 
because we've set admin to true. But the moment we set it to false, I've not saved it, so look, it's there. But the moment I set it to false and see, we go there and admin is nowhere. Can you see this? So although the whole thing is there, we are not, we are rendering the things conditionally. And this is so beautiful thing. I love it, love it. You can see that it's so nice because now we can do everything. You can just check what to render and what not to render to the user. Can you see this? If there are any questions here. So depending on the app, what are you trying to build? Right. We don't need to create a separate, if we go ahead with a separate nav bar, then you start using it. But you can use the same nav bar. Render the thing dynamically and then boom, we are doing it. Okay, let's add the footer and then um, we just can go from here. So the footer is going to be this. Let me first add some message and then see not that. So the footer is going to, we are going to create a new like, component. Inside the component, let's create a new folder for footer, the ESX, right? And then this footer is, uh, oh. So it's just footer, and we create a footer, ESX, right? And then this footer, like, no, don't let me waste your time because at least we know how it works. If you really understand, uh, like you grab hold of the things that we did for the navbar, this should be easy. So all we are rendering is we are just having um the logo and then the um the copyright information. And remember, we are calling the company name, and the company name is coming from. We are going to pass it as a prop, right? Accept it as a prop and render it over here. Right, and then let's add the CSS files for the footer. This is easy, that's why I don't want this left down here. So, um, CSS. If you have any questions with the code, I'll just send the link online. Then you can grab all of it and then. Uh, so, we got it. No, we have to go to the container. And just add the footer instead of this one. So instead of going to import the footer in all the places, like instead of going to import the footer in all the uh like pages, 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 footer, footer. No, just put it inside the container and boom, every page that has access to the footer is being done. Now remember that we had to pass the logo as a prop logo here, and then have uh, company name, right? And then we're going to do the company name, right? And then we are importing that company name here. Too. We're passing it as a pro, right? And then we can. It is saying I'm going too fast. I'm so sorry, but we got half of that document. Are there any questions? But I think you need to add some styles to the container to like just push this thing away instead of um like um it's being there. So let's add the container styles. I think I even started it here. Let me get the container to see. No problem. The container is this. So we are having the oops, let me just uh, add. And I like to just add two styles, the container, the main container, which is going to have a width, a main width of at least 100 percent So that at least the the if the even there's no page, the whole thing is going to the footer is going down, and then from there the content is going to have this pattern. This very simple styles to the container, and then nothing more, nothing more. So. So let me start this thing. I'm doing a lot of copy and pasting because we agreed to do that so that we don't waste much time. Just the explanation stuff is important, right? So the container is having 
um, this container. And, and then from there, we are just giving the children like a pattern around it and then boom. Oh, sorry. Um, my fucking and this one is just online. Um, how do we call it? We call it. We have it right. Perfect. So we got everything up there and then, and then we have the uh great. So I'm sorry my copy didn't fit in there. So I think we are having this pattern. Don't worry about styling because you can add them later. But can you see this? That we are on the home page, we have this content. When we go to the about page, we are going to have this content and they are rendered dynamically. Now, because the user is having the role, which can be admin, like admin, he sees this, right? And then when we go there, oops, here's no found. Right? Yay, here's no found. Yeah, because we've not defined the page for these ones. Please, in your question, in your question. We got a filter then let me add okay. Once we've done this one, I think the next big thing big thing we're gonna focus on is to um building this um uh, important the data because I think we've done this. So the next thing is to grab the data from the API, then render it on screen. And we're gonna learn a beautiful way to do that, right? Using Read us to it. Before we go to it, let's start reading around read us to it, read us and see how the yeah, I think we should do this now. All right, so how do we fetch the data? I was showing you the React, um, the getting started guide on the Redux toolkit website, and then that's what we are going to follow. So documentation again, let's go. So first of all, we need to install the Redux toolkit, right? So let's see, we're going to do this. See this terminal, right? Let's one. I do this, I'm installing. And then from there, yeah, let's just follow it. Create a Redux store. So the action is to create um, a folder inside app, then um, SRC app, then store. So let's just do that. So a new folder here, uh, not, not here. Great, so this folder is created inside the SRC, then there's app store folder. We've done this and then let's go ahead. And then they are seeing that we are using JavaScript. So we are going to copy and paste this guy there. Great, you see this, we just copy and paste. We are importing configure store, and this configure store is what we are going to use to set up our store for reader. So they explain what it means over here for us. And then from there, we are now going to make this store accessible in our whole app. We're going to provide this store to our app. So we are just going to grab hold of this. Now they said we should go to the index, the JS file, but we know that our index P index file, because we are using bits, it is going to be our main JS. So let's go to our main JS and then let's put this guy. Let's put this. Guy. Then from there, all we do is that we surround our whole application around the provider. So here. Yeah. 
We are going to sound this around the truth by the way. And that's it. And that's it. Our store is now available around the whole app. It means that every company can grab hold of what is in the store. Now, what should people have access to? Now we need to create our uh, reduces, right? So in Reader's Toolkit, we call them slices. The slices is going to be like, uh, you know, slices of bread. We take this portion, this portion, this, we chop them into smaller pieces. So all the components we're going to work on are going to call slices. Um, let's see. They are seeing that for the example they are using is for a counter. And then they are seeing that the further structure we need to follow is this. We need to add a file named SRC features. Now the feature we're going to work on is they are being used as an example, it's called counter. But then ours, for the first product, first thing we like to do is the product, All right? Let's see. Great, this is the product. So that's the first thing we like to do, right? This is the data we are going to do in our application. So the feature is going to be product. And then we are going to create product slides. So it's the name, what you are going to work on, then the slide title. Right so let's go here and then let me just see this guy here. And then we go to SRC, create features, right? And then inside the features, let's create product. We just flew in their convention. And then inside the product, oh, this should be a, a folder, not a file, right? Inside the features, the first feature we like to work on is the um, product. We are going to use the same thing to do all the things like um, order, authentication, all of those stuff, right? And the next, the product will have a slice. This is where we are going to handle everything readout. So product slides. We are just following their convention. Counter, counter slides. Product, product slides. Um, seal, seal slides. Off, off slides, right? And then I feel like copying and pasting. Yeah. Yay, I copied and pasted it. So um, they have the convention, that's why I like to copy and paste. And then you are going to just do You could read around this and see how they created the slides. But all we're doing is that we are going to use create reducer. Instead of defining our reducers like one by one, we are going to use that create reducer and then create slides, which will help us to create immutable components, right? And then we render them on the screen. So we got this. The initial state was just this button. We don't care. Let's delete some of these things. And one thing we need to know is that uh, anything, right, any action that would like to dispatch the readers, um, uh, their keywords, one of the keywords that got me crazy with readers, just mm -hmm. dispatch, you know, dispatch an act action, payload. When I started learning readers, I was like, what? It sounds confusing, but now <laughs> yeah, like the food I eat all the time. So no good big things. So I think we should add this here. Yeah. Right. Perfect. So um the anything that we are going to do, like right? any action that we are going to dispatch, let's say we like to change the whole theme of the application. You know, it has nothing to do with API um request. So let me undo what I did and then show you. See, with this, they were doing increment. And this increment will just take a state and then it keeps changing the data. So we are mutating it over here, right? And the same thing, if we, we want to do anything in our app, for example, let's assume we want to um, handle um, some button click. And that button click will just take us to the details page. It has nothing to do with API request. We've handled that over here. If we need to change the theme that I told you, we can do it here. If we need to just perform something, right? The user dispatch an action, it goes to the reader store and then change something in the store. We do it inside the reducer, inside the reducer. But if that thing has to do with API request, if we have to go online and do this, then uh, we should do it in something called um, um, Extra reduces. We are going to see an example of this one. Great. Now let's change this to our, like, this is the counter slide, but we like to do product 
slice, right? This is the skeleton that we want to follow. I don't know if there are any questions there. It may sound, it may seem confusing, but hey, <laughs> we try to get clear. Okay. Then from there, they are saying that we should import that slides inside our store. So let's do that now. Let's go to the store. And then let me see if this. Okay, so um, let's call it product. Let's say to um, product slide. Right, so we are importing this and then, but the convention is that although it's coming from, you see, counter slides, instead of calling it counter slides, they call it counter reduce. It's just a naming convention in uh, Redux. So um, this is just a name. So we could go with counter reducer, right? Uh, reducer. Yeah. A product reducer, but it's just a naming convention, right? Because this is a reducer, so we don't want to call it a slide. But if you call it a slide um, or a reducer, it changes nothing because it's just a variable name. Great. Okay. And then from there, whatever we define, we can call it on the page and then use it. Whatever we define, we can call it on the page and use it. We want to fetch API data. So how do we go about it? Let's see if they have something. Yay, there's this thing here. It's called create a thing tank, right? Create a thing tank. And that create a thing tank is used to handle um, asynchronous data, like API call, fetching data from API. We can use that create a thing tank to do it. And then let's look at the example they are using. Because for us to we are going to call some data from the API. So let's see, let's look at the example they are needed. So we are seeing that we are going to have fetch by ID. All right. We, we define the constant. We, we are using create sync tank. Now the benefit of using that create sync tank is that it allows us to track the state of our API call. For example, whenever we are making API calls, the data could be loaded, it could be pending, it could be successful. Right, so we can track the state of that API call. We could track the state of that API call. That's why we are using the pretty thing. So, so it's most common use. We should not need to explicitly share the time, whatever, whatever, whatever. All right, don't worry, let's keep going. And they are saying that over here they were using fetch, and then they were fetching the URL, and then they send the response there, right? And that's what we would like to do. Related. So, so it was inside the slides. I don't know if you could see this. This was used inside the slides. So let's also go ahead and use this one. But for API call, I would love to use Axios. We could go with fetch, but I like to use Axios. So let me enter so Axios and then um, whilst it's installing, let's start uh, by importing Axios from Axios and then, um, yeah. We have Axios from Axios, and then we are going to make an API call, but we need that API um, URL, right? So let me import it. Do you remember that we created the API URL? All uh, right. We created that API URL. Components, you first. Is that where you put it? Oh my goodness. You put the thing inside components. All right, don't worry. Let me continue. But you put in the it be in the in the house. But no problem, no problem. Okay. Right. And then now they had a function which we're we're calling the um create a sync time. So let's do something similar. And this function is going to have the action and then the action there, like just like the read actually of the way things. And um, um, let me go slow because. Um, Titi was saying that, hey, you are moving too fast. All right. Just look at what they did. We are just going to follow the same example. I'm not just doing any magic here. I'm following the documentation. So we don't export because we like to take it to other components. 
const now what we're going to do is fit uh pro facts right is going to be equal to uh create the same thing right and then we do this right we just do the same thing it's going to be called to create the same thing now we have to give them action that we like to perform the action is going to be product so that we can like grab hold of what is happening like in the reader store and then we like to do fetch product it's up to you you can name this thing anything and then this is going to be the action right and then from there we are going to use a sync right to fetch the data cool and then it's just this one can you see that this is what they are doing i'm just doing the same thing I'm, I'm not doing any magic so um, response response is equal to a week all right axios dot get now get is just going to like axios saying get me that oh go grab this link here and then look at the api that we are trying to grab hold of is slash product right so the base URL is like the product will get us all these products. So let me go here and then axios.get. Now we got the base URL, so we can just do this. Let's do string interpolation and then, oops. All right, slash, um, oh, cool. And then, let me just get up some screen so then we can do CRD response. Response. Response the data. Because it's an API code, we are going to get the data. So we can response. Right. I don't know if there are any questions with this. So we are all we are doing is that we are just going to fetch data from that this URL is like the product. We just go in here. And then from there, we are returning this. Now, the only magic about this is the re uh, reader's way of doing this, but just accept it that it's coming from the um, reader, right? So this is our normal method to fetch data. But then after fetching the data, when we send it, that data so that users can see it, we need to do the magic here. Do you remember that in the example they give, in the example they give, let's go back to the example. Like they had a name, like the initial state, they had an initial state, they had a name. And then let's go ahead. You see, this thing is not counted. So that, I'm sorry, I was just, so it, they had a name. And then the initial state is what is going to like, People are going to tap on to when they go to product. So our initial state is going to be, we are going to have the product, right, as an array, right? This is going to be the array of product. And then we are going to have error, which is set to, for now, it's going to be null. And then let's see status. This, um, I, I don't. So the, when the whole company loot, it, the product is going to be empty. We have no product. There's no error. The state is idle. It is going on. Magic! Don't worry. Then from there, we are calling that initial states. And then when we load the data, let's track like how things happen. And then after tracking it, if the whole loading is successful, then we push the data into the um the store for other companies to have it right so what do we do we call extra reduces now let me go into this guy and see if we are going to have some tutorial about the extra reduces right I'm going to fix that guy extra reduce extra reduce right great let's see yeah, the extra reducers. So one of the key concepts is extra reducers. 
And then uh, if you're not around it, they said that if you want to do anything that has to do with external core, we use the extra reducer. And look at the example they gave. Look, they were fetching some data, right? They were fetching some data. It's called uh, increment. And they were seeing that they were adding cases. And this case is like, oh, case, uh, whatever happened, what should we do? This is exactly what we like to do. We are going to add the extra cases, extra reducers with the builder method and add the cases. The cases are going to be like, okay, if we are loading in the field, so let me try typing it out. Then we talk about it and then extra reducers. And then it's going to take what? It's going to take a builder. And then it's going to take um, a builder. Here, right? And then all we do is that we do this and then we call builder dot. Now this builder dot um, add keys is where we are going to do like, we are going to check this thing. If they fetch data, whatever happens to it, what should we do, right? What should we do? I thought the pilot was going to be my friend to be but he is tired of waiting. And then so let me see if he's going to help me. Builder dot yeah, add keys and then co pilot come to work today because we wanna add you to our project. All right, great, right. we got it. So, for power set, easy to do. Dot. Um, we don't have to do this. So, okay. For power set, to work, but I think he's tired. Perfect. Yay, this is what Copilot is giving us. And let's try to understand what they are saying. So the cases we are calling fetch product, but it could, um, the state, like it could be loading now. This pending for fail rejected is just coming from um, the API call. You know it already. Whenever we make um, an async, an Axios, we make an, a call with the Axios or whatever, we get this pending for fail rejected thing, right? So we are just going to check that if the fetching is pending, what should we do? We just want to say that the state dot status, this guy, instead of being an error, it should be idle. Then well, it should be loading, right? Then when we check the loading state, right? What we can do is that we can start showing the user some loading icon. But if it gets fulfilled, what do we do? We say, hey, the state is succeeded. If it gets succeeded, then we push the data. This response, response the data. We push it into this product. Great. And the last one is if you get filled or if it is it gets an error, right? Let's see error. If there's an error, we can see that state the error is equal to action the error the message. Miracle. No miracles. I'm just following this. So if it is rejected, if it is succeeded, just following this. You can go ahead and read about it and then build up your ad increment. And you can go ahead and read about this, create a sync plan, and then the extra users are going to be able to work. All right, let's continue. Thanks for the questions. I really appreciate that. And the last one is to now let the user be able to see what is happening. Um, there are several ways. We could go into the, wherever we are calling the data and just um, get the product, get all of it. But then it's going to be a lot of work. So normally I like defining them here. So you can export. Okay, we are going to select other products. It's going to be states the product, the products, this, 
very then we are going to have the last one select status it's going to be state the status the status and then um select error is going to be state the error right um i don't know if you have any questions with this so we are grabbing hold of all the data like all the product or the states then the error and let's do something with it right um, this is like a magic i don't everything is going very so nothing so we go into the product now we have the product slides so let's create a product itself a product and this is what we're going to use to render the product on screen all right let me go make it gsx and then I have to so let me call it product and that's right. Cool. And then what should we do when we come to that product page? There's some magic here, right? We are first of all going to import the thing that we need from this slides. And I think um you can see an example here. I want to show you this example. I want to show you so that you don't get lost. Yes, look, the, we are importing this, all the things that we need from this place. So the include, use selector, use dispatch. Let's copy this. And then um, we copy, use selector, use dispatch from React, Redux. Remember, we install it using the, uh, then you, okay, it's trying to help us. So then we copy the select product and then fetch product. We copy this fetch product and then this uh, select product. This is going to be the product, or we could better call it get all product, but don't worry, we could uh, call it select product. This is select product. No, I don't want this name. I want it to be a name that is much more readable. So let's call it um, get or product. Right. Then we use it here. So it will just get us all the product, and then we can call it get call this get product error. Sorry. That is, and then this one can be get oh. ready. Okay. Cool. Oh. I'm not sure I'm confusing you. This is just to get the states here. We are just trying to get these. So the three here is just what we are trying to export because we need them. And we are first exporting the product. We know that the product initially will be empty, but when we load the data, it is going to have all the list of data. And I'm trying to export them here. So if this states, the, um, the global state of the application, dot, you remember we defined the product there. So state of product, and this product is going to refer to this product reducer. So it's state of product. And when we come to the product, the initial product, this is what we get in here. Instead of product dot status, it just the status. Instead of product dot error, it just the error. Remember, we are dynamically changing the error based on the loading state, right? and that's what we need here. Okay, so let me grab hold of the next guys here. So fetch product, I don't know if it's correct. It's not fetch product, it's fetch products. We're going to see when we take the product and then we get product status is here. And the last one is get for that error. It's also going to be great. We got all the things we need from here. And then what do we do next? The next thing that we like to be concerned about is that um, when do we fetch a product, right? When do we fetch like make API code? Do you think that the moment initially in React, we could use use effect? Uh, yeah. 
use effect. Yeah, we can use use effect to check if things are happening, then we can load it that. But with Redux, we can check the state. We are still going to use use effect. So let's go use effect, right? And then what do we do? So we got this guy here, and then product slides. Let's first, uh, okay, dispatch is here, and then, oh, copilot won't work today. All right, great. So look, we are saying that a product is going to be get all product, like this product. Error status is going to be get the product status, and error is going to be get the error. We are using the use selector hook. Now let's go and see use selector. What is it? Use selector. Use selector. Let's see if we're going to have use selector. The hook. It's just used to grab hold of the data, like from the um, from the um, um, slides. If we go ahead and just say that we we want to just uh, grab hold of the get all product, we have this here, so we are just going to grab it like this. No, it's just going to return the function. But we use the use selector hook to just get the data. Yeah, so that's why we are calling the use selector on all the things here. Then boom. Then let's see when do we load the data so we can see the use effect to go in, to go in. Right. Cool. So we are just calling use effect. Yeah. Uh oh, right. you say effect. Who called that? Yeah. We are just calling use effect. We check that if the status is idle, then we are going to dispatch fetch product. Remember, initially the status is idle. Then we are going to dispatch fetch product. And this one will just call this function. And the magic is the magic is that the moment this function is called, we are going to have the data. Then once it gets succeeded, then uh, we put the data into the uh, product. Let me show it on the screen. Then what if there's an error? Right, what if there's an error? What if there's an error? Then let's try to get this one. So if status is loading, let's use some loading icon, right? And then if status is if um status is going to be an error, then let's return the error. Great. Confusion set in no. We are just loading the data when um there's an error, but if there's no error, then if there's an error, we show in it. If it's loading, we show the loading icon. And then if there's nothing, what do we do? Let's just console the log the data and see. Let's see CLG and then the product, the set of product. So let's try doing this. Please let's go back in to see if there's no confusion. We are using the use selector hook to get the data from the product, the status, the error, and we are getting them from where? From here. The product, the error, the status. And then for now they are empty. There's nothing. But once we fed the API, we make the API call. We change those stuff. If the call is successful, then we push the data Action of payload is just what will come from this. We are going to retain this data. So that data will be pushed into the product. And then if it is successful, if the state is successful, it means that if it's not idle, if it's not loading, if it's, it means that it is successful, right? Then don't worry, just show the data. If not, show the error. If it is still loading, show the loading status. So um, let's go and check it here. Okay, we need to import this product somewhere. Remember, we are going to show all the product on the home page according to this design. We're going to show this product on the home page. Let's go to the roots. The root route. Okay. 
So we are going to import product index. So instead of this home, my press import well, product index, right? And this one is accepting the report. So here at right. So let's try to see if this is going to work. Perfect. Axios. 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 All right. So we have to put that in the petition mark. Sorry. There may be an error, don't worry. Coding is sort of about now. Look, do you see the loading thing? Boom. Did you see that? It was loading and then it stopped loading. All right, let's check. Ah, <laughs> I don't have Redux working in the private. Um, but I want to see this. Let me go to um this guy here, the new window. I don't have um, Redux um, installed over there. Yeah. Redux dev tools. Yeah, you see loading? Can you see that? Boom. All right, so let's get this. Can you see that? Look, we got a payload. Look at this. So product, the fetch product is fulfilled. And look at the data we are getting. It may be very tiny. I don't know if you can see that. But initially, the status was pending. And then it got fulfilled. And then we have all this data. It means that our, React, our Redux code is working. We've not been able to fetch data from the API. How was it? <laughs> We would we may love to go over again um if you are having issues, but I would strongly recommend you to um, read the documentation on the uh on here. Yeah, on the um Redux toolkit. You just have everything you need to get out of the world, right? Right. The next portion of this whole thing is to render that data on the screen. All right, so we now have all the data loading over here for us. And we would like to render it using a component. Now, do you remember how we did for the nav, um, nav bar? First of all, we created, I think, please hold on, let me add a comment message to this. So this is the word for that. All right. Great. Right. First of all, we created a nav item. And that item was used to render a single item like this one. And then we had the whole nav bar, which rendered the whole of the items. And we are going to use the same strategy to render our list on the screen. Because what we're going to have is something like this. Great. You can see that. Just one single item, one single item, one single item. And then we like to render like the whole the whole list is going to be one, like the nav bar. And then each single item inside is going to be like a nav item. So we're going to render it with a product pad, right? So let's go ahead and then first of all, inside the the product feature, let me create another component called components, right? Now this could be a different name depending on what you want, but then it's just going, it's just me, right? So let's call this product um product. Should I call it product card or product item? I don't know. We can call it product card. Right. So this is just going to use to render the product item or product card, right? Because I prefer this name because it's a card, right? 
is a card, no, not just an item, it's lovely to call it a card. Okay, then from here, let's do our EFC, our good old way of doing things. Great, so we have the product card, and then what do we do? We know that that specific card is going to receive a product, uh, product, right? It's going to receive a product, and then when it receives the product, what do we want to do? All we do is that we like to render the product. Now, what um, does a product has? I don't know, if you look at this screen, you can see that what we are getting from the API, like there's a single product, and a product has a name and a price and a description and an image, right? So we like to render these things on the screen, right? So uh, let's just do something like this. I'm going to not waste your time. But Perfect. So, um, cool. So we are going to receive a product, and then we are rendering them. I will give this guy a key. The product is having an ID, so we are giving it a key in class. Then the product is having an image. You see this IMG, and that is what we would like to render here. We give it an alt of the product name. And then the product is having a name and a price. Name, price, right? So this is going to be used to render the product item, right? And um, yeah. So can we add prop types to this to check what prop types are? Import prop types. Prop. That is right. And then what we do is that we can define the um, product, okay. And then we are going to have, there's a product and then it's going to be an object, right? That's all. And I think we are good to go. I don't know if there are any questions for this. We are just following the same thing we did the last time. When we were creating the um, nav item, nav bar, so this means that in React, when you just learn how to do one thing, it, it, it just keeps following you. This is going to be used to render one single product, right? To product card. And then the next component I would like to create is the product list. Right. So RAFC, you could follow them. All right, and then this is called product list. And then the product list is going to have the list of all the products, right? So how does it go to look? So it is also going to not going to accept one product, but a list of products, right? And this product, we are going to just render the product with a product card, right? So let me just go through those two and then is here so that we don't waste time. Cool. So we are going to take the list of products, right? We are going to receive this product from the um, from the product here, like this component receiving the product, right? You see that we're having product here. It's going to be um, an array, okay? And then this product, we're going to pass it to the product card, sorry, product list. And then this product list is going to map through the whole thing. And we render each product like with the product card, right? Good. We render each product, each of the product, the product card. The same way as we render the um the nav items with a nav um bar, we are rendering product cards. Sorry, all the products. We, uh, we are rendering them in the product list and each product is being rendered using this card. You see, this product is, um, sorry, this is going to be the product list. And we are going to have individual cards, this one card, this one card, this one card, this one card. It, it will just keep going, right? So this is going to be the cards instead of repeating ourselves over and over again, right? I don't know if there are any questions. And whilst I'm here uh, waiting for your question, 
let me just add the stars for this um, thing so that at least we will have something to look at. Okay, so we just some list, adding some space around it and then some small styles here. Nothing serious here. You can add your own good styles. I know you are a CSS guru. Um, that's like um, product the CSS. So the same thing for the card. Perfect. And then once we are here, we can just go straight into the this product and then instead of just rendering this whole thing doing a console log we can just call the um pro that list right I think it's here product list and then pass the product as product yeah it means that we are rendering the list of products coming from um our reader store, we are rendering it with the product list. And this product list is just going to map to the whole of the product. And then all it is doing is that for each, it will also render it with a product card. <laughs> I could have done this. I could have done this um, like mapping thing inside this product place over here. I'm just, I just decided to do this, like map it with a product list. The reason is that sometime later, when we are rendering what the, the product the user has ordered, it is also going to be a list of products, right? And we don't want to repeat the same thing again. We just call the product list and pass the orders he has ordered or the user has ordered to the product list. And then it is going to render that list, right? So anytime we want to render some list, of product, we are going to use this product. List. That's why I created here. I could have gone straight forward, create this list here, and then anytime I need to render a list, I create the whole list from scratch again. But React is saying that no, don't repeat. So let's go to the screen and see what we got. Where's, where are you? Right. Yay! Look at this. We got our product rendered using this list on the screen. I don't know, let's see this is, uh, You like it? I don't know where it's coming from, but let me see if I can. Well, at least it's fine, right? It's fine. At least we are having some product listed on the screen. And then, uh, pixels, the width, and then margin button, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe just one time. Yeah, we just have them for, I don't know, you can add your styles later, but I think the main, most important thing is we are seeing the product that we are rendering here and they are waiting for it. If there are any questions, you can go ahead and ask them. The whole idea is that we can render our list, right? Using a card. This card is just for one single product. And then we have the list, the whole list, right? And then we are calling this list here, passing it the product. Later, when we are about to render the list of orders, you're going to see that, yeah, we did the right thing. At least um, we are using the same thing. Right. Good. Right. When we try loading, look at what happened. It will start loading here. Just look, can you see the loading? Loading, boom. Yeah, and then it's all coming from here. If it is loading, Return loading. If not, just return the list. All right. I'm sorry if I'm um, just confusing you. <laughs> Take over the crowbar. I mean, there could be better ways of to explain this. Here. Um, uh, there could be better ways of to do this, but I think for now, this one will do it. Close. 
All right, so from our design, I think we've done this. And then let's go to our design again. Yep. The next part is to render the details page. The details page. Fine. Right. So how do we do it? First of all, we need to create a route for this details page. So let me go to the main and then let's create a route for the details page. So it is going to be, I'm going to put a, I'm going to just copy uh, this and then duplicate it. Cool, so it's going to be product plus product ID. And I'd like to render the product details. And then we've not created a, this product details, right? So let's go ahead and create this product details and then I like to create it inside the components for this guy. So let's call it for that. Great. And then what does a product details and team? It is just going to be like when we click on one single product, then we go to that specific product details. Team. But this opens up another magic that we are going to do. How do we um, find the specific product we like to go to? How do we do that? The first thing is that I like to do this from the um, product card. And the first thing is that we should be able to click on this card, right? There could be a button here where we can click to go to the details page, right? But then, for me, what I want to do is I would like to click on the whole button. So let's add an on-click handler to this. So we're going to add an on-click handler to this. And then let me add an on-click handler to this. And then let's define this on-click handler. And then the, this on-click handler, you see we are passing in the product ID. So let's go here and then, OK. Oh, Paolo, you are trying to help me. How do you control the click here? Yeah. It's just going to, yeah, that's all it could do. <laughs> so it's going to take the product ID, right? It's going to take the product ID, and then um, we like to render something. But before we even know what to render, um, we would like to, whenever we click on the product, we like to filter through the whole of this product list. Okay, the whole of this list that is coming. Uh, yeah. I don't, I think I've missed an error. I've seen something that's a picking up. Okay. Yeah. So we are going to filter through this whole thing, right? This whole list. <laughs> but remember that before we click on one single product, we are already having all the products inside our Redux store, right? So there's no need. To go to the database to fetch that for that single product again, right? We could have done that. We could just say that, hey, uh, go inside the database, fetch me the product that we clicked on, and then we can show it on the screen. But that is too much expensive because we've already loaded the data on the screen. So what do we do? We just want to um, filter through the data and, and then to do this, we first need to go to the Redux store and then make some small changes out there. So let's go to the Redux store, this slides, product slides. And then when we go there, I'd like to just define something that's called, uh, called um, sorry, selected product, right? So we are going to see there's a selected product, right? And then let's select a product. It's going to be null initially. But when do we select a product? We can go inside the reduces, right? And this reduces is going to allow us to select a product. And then all we do is that we are going to um, push the state of selected. Um, this selected product is going to be the, when we click on this product, we are going to, you see this place. Whenever we click on this one single product, we are going to filter through the whole product. And then we are going to find the product that have the same ID as the one we've clicked on. 
Then when we get a product, we just um, send this product um, to the action of payload. So let me just um, do this. All right. So we are just saying that product, the filter, then the product or ID is going to be this specific ID. Okay, so we are going to filter the product, but you can see that we don't have the product. So what do we do? So let's call the product from the um, using use selector, use this patch, and then let's call the product. So let me do just a copy and paste work from here. So from the um, product list. So this product, how did we get a product there? I think we use the use selector and use this patch to um over here and then when we go here we need to get this list so we call from okay so get all product right great so all we are looking for is the get all product and then we want also the selected um um, products, right? Great. And then we are going to get grab these selected products. Let's see if we, the name is really selected products. We are going to grab them from here, and then we are going to use the use this um dispatch method, right, to get these things. Great. Cool. So let me go inside this to see that if the real thing that I'm going to this. Cool, we got the selected product. Yeah, and then we need to export this. That's why my thing was not seeing it. Go and export it inside a product or um, product slide or action. So you select the product, and then we are going to call the selected product. Cool. And then, then, then. Cool. So this select product, select product is going to take some action, right? And we are going to respond with this. So all we do is that we are going to dispatch this select product action. So um, when we go here, we got the response product of filter the product. And we are going to find a product with this product ID. So let me just push this one here. And then once we get the this one, we like to dispatch this select product with response uh, like this there. I don't know how to this one. All right. Let me go by game. All we're doing is that when we click one specific product, we have product. This is product. And we don't have product. So we are going to have product. No, we are going to have set product. Yep. And then this is going to take product ID. I'm sorry when I was talking in this to this view. Okay, so when we click on a single product, right? Now there's no click attached to it, but then when we click on it, we would like to, because we are going to have the product ID, and then the whole thing is that we are going to filter the whole products. And the whole product is everything we have in our Redux store. We are getting it from get all product. We're going to get everything in our Redux store. And then we are filtering through all the product, right? Product the filter. And then we are checking the product that has this product specific product ID. Great. And we are dispatching the action. We are dispatching select product. 
this product does not need to go to a database. So that's why we are putting it in the reduces, right? So we are dispatching the select product. And when we click on select product, what do we do? We push, um, we have select product. Select product is just selecting one product. We push this into selected product. Just the name, selected product. So state of selected product is going to be the action or payload, or it's going to be the response that we go from clicking on one. Now, if you want, you can, we are going to do this here, CLG, and then we can response, and then we can call it, um, um, click, okay. You're going to see this, and then, um, don't worry, product details. Cool, so let's click on one and see what happened. Yes, yeah, so yeah, always need to be ours. We need to put them. All right. Selected, select product um, does not have a default export. Okay. All right, so select product. We have it here. Import. Okay, select product. Select product. Okay, I need to start in the same way. All right, so product slice does not have a, does not provide an export name select product. Okay. I think my tabs are so many. I need to close some of them. Okay. So what are we going to select product, not selected product, right? Select product, not selected product. My name is confusing me. The tabs are so many. Let me close some of them. And then we dash to go away. And then we to can go. All right, so you have only three, right? Okay. Reference on product details is not defined. Here you are right. All right. Okay. I'm doing this on screen, so sometimes we may delay a bit. So I'm sorry. So product details. It's just about programming. We need to start fixing errors. Right. In cool, we got a list of the whole product. Let's see if we select one. Good. Can you see this? 
when we click on one, it select the product, right? Let's click on another one. It select that product. Then we click on another one. We selected that product, right? And this is what we did over here. The moment um, we click on one of the products, it's not product, uh, yeah, inside the product. Uh, the moment we click on one of the products, because we are rendering everything with the product tag. We, we filter through the product and find a product that has that product ID. Yeah, right. And we are just dispatching select product. And all select product does is that, um, if you look at this page, it just take the action, the state and action. And then all it does is that state the product, selected product here yeah, is going to be action the page. And then when we go to the details page, we can now go to the details page, right? And then when we go to the details page, we can just look at the state and find the selected product. It will be there, right? And then how do we go to the details page? Let's make quick over this page. Let me close this and then close, close address, right? Close uh, address. Yeah, we have this details page. So before we go to the details page, I'd like to, Go to the product specific product in that product card. Mm -hmm. And what are we going to do over there? We just want to navigate. So there's something in React router says called use navigate. Use navigate. And then we can just call the um okay, what colors are trying to help me? navigate is equal to use navigate. And then once we are here, we like to navigate to the product slash this product ID. So you're going to products like that specific product ID. Then, um, when we go there, we would like to now view the specific product view. Okay. Now, for the purposes of time, let's not waste time. Let me paste what we are going to get here, and then let's discuss it. So, so we are using we are calling the use selector again because we want to select that selected product, and then we are calling the get product details, get product details, and this is going to be I don't know if that's how I named it. Oops, I need to go and define this get product details out there. Let's go to a product slice. I've not defined this. So, uh, you know, we have them this here, selected product. Just like we did for all these, we did for product error status. Let's also export the product details here. I'm sorry, selected product. Let's also, okay, export on get product detail. Great. Is it going to be equal to state of product, the selected product? State of product, the selected product. It's going to be that specific product detail. And we are importing this guy from here. We are importing this guy, and then using user selector to get the data. I'm getting the container, and then we are rendering the data. There may be some errors, but let's click on it and see. And then start to send this. Cool. So once we click on it, it should take us to way. Can you see this? Look at this. Once we click on one specific product, it takes us to the products like that product ID. And I was I'm using this React thing to go by, right? Over the one is still seeing that uh, navigate minus one. Navigate minus one means go back, go back. So you can do navigate plus one, go forward. Right. <laughs> right. So we are getting the product details. Right. And then it's just aligning with this design that we have. The image is here, this guy is here. You can check the code we have there for you. 
Paso fa In Let's check if there are some errors in the code. Great, we have the product login successfully, and then there's no errors. Yeah, we are good to go. We're going gradually, right? I think we need to, uh, okay, we're not receiving any props, so no need to do this. There was a consumer message I'd like to do. It was in the product card, right? No, we took it out. Okay, great. So let's take it out. Cool. We are all set. So this is the E. Cool. So we are able to, so for now, we've been able to fetch the product and then we are able to go to a single product page by using this um, specific product ID. Um, why can't we find? Yeah. We can find it. Yeah, we can find it now. Sure, so we are able to click on one product, go to the product details page, and still our state is working, right? We have all this data inside our state. Let me show you. Um, this is our state, and then we can see this state, and then we dispatch the, uh, let's click on one, one thing I think we're in this. Uh, when we dispatch something, We can go here because I'm not using the other one. Great, let's click on one. And then you can see that we dispatched select product. And then now this is the selected product that we are having. And then we can dispatch another one. We can go dispatch another action. And look, we dispatch another action and it's a different product altogether. All right, this is, this is read that for you. Right. The next part of this whole thing is to create authentication and make sure that users can um, order the product, right? And if someone is an admin, he can create a product. Authentication authorization, right? And it's going to be a lot of things that we are going to do. So um, I'd like to see you in the part two.